I don't know about you, but I felt like the Angels really needed that win against the Baltimore Orioles on Monday night. We're going to talk about how they did it and how Shohei Otani dazzled on the mound and at the plate in this one. Is there cause for concern about the home runs? We'll talk about it. Let's get into it. You're locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen today. You can find us anywhere that you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on SiriusXM. All you got to do is search Locked On Angels. The best way you can help us out is by giving us a rate and review, just like Matty Ice did recently. Angel fans since 1995 left us a review. Thank you for that. Matty Ice. And those watching on YouTube, thanks for choosing to subscribe to the show. We really appreciate you. Be sure to click that bell to be notified every time a new episode drops and comment below. We really appreciate that as well. It really helps out the channel, by the way. Hey, today's show is brought to you by the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. What's going on, everybody? You've got the Frisch brothers. Normally, uh, today, it's just going to be me. I'm John Frisch. I'm one half of Locked On Angels and the Super Halo Bros. My brother, Mike, is normally here with me. However, (laughs) he spilled on his laptop. And uh, so RIP to the laptop. He is working on getting a new one and uh, should be back with us shortly. But you know how those things go. You make one little move and then your drink falls over and That's it. I asked him what drink he uh, spilled, and he said it was iced tea. And I said, yeah, that sounds about right. So, Mike, we uh, are wishing you the best, and we hope that you can get back to us soon and uh, be on the show here with me. We really uh, uh, we look forward to that. Uh, We've been fans of this team for years, and so we're grateful that you put your trust in us to talk to you about the Angels every single day of the week, Monday through Friday. We're happy to be here for you. It's uh, your team every day, of course, here on Locked On Angels. Locked On Everydayers, don't forget to get your questions in. For Fan Mail Friday, we're going to recap the last game of this Orioles series, which takes place on Thursday, and then we'll get into two segments of Fan Mail Friday. But first, we got to look at last night's game against the Baltimore Orioles, or the Baltimore Orioles, just trying to save time. The Angels won this one 9-5, to five, and man, to me, it was a much-needed win because of how this weekend went, actually the last week went, considering... They won the first game of each series that they played against Texas, against the Astros, and then against Cleveland, and then they struggled in the remaining two games. Now, I understand we're on that trajectory again. However, we have three more games against the Orioles, and last night they showed up and they showed out, and it all began with Shohei Otani on the mound. He allowed six base runners, but three of them were on home runs. Now, we talked about this about a week ago is there concern about Shohei Otani and the number of home runs he's been giving up this season? Well, here's the thing. Last year, he gave up 14 in total when he was pitching last year. This year, he's already given up 10. Now, he did go seven innings pitch. Again, five earned runs, three home runs, four hits, five strikeouts, two walks on 98 pitches. He sits at a 3.23 ERA this season. Offensively, he went four for five with a 456 foot home run. Again, a three run home run, and he also took a walk. His average is now back over 300. He's got a 932 OPS, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention that he almost became, once again, this season, almost became a, the first starting pitcher in MLB to hit for the cycle. He nearly did that against Oakland. He almost did it on Monday night against the Orioles. All he needed was that double. He got one last chance, ended up with a single, but it was still great to see him have such a great game at the plate. Now, I know we're all concerned about his home runs, and a lot of people have been attributing that to the sweeper usage. And yes, many of his home runs have come on the sweeper, but here's what was different about Shohei last night. Now, one of the home runs he gave up uh, was on the fastball, and... His pitch mix uh, was varied last night. Uh, 27 cutters, 26 sweepers, and 25 four-seam fastballs, and 14 splitters, five sinkers, and one curveball, according to StatCast and Baseball Savant. What I notice about this 
is that he was using the splitter more because I think he's not as concerned about his fingers. When he uses that splitter, that's how he gets those blisters. And he's come to rely on the sweeper a whole lot this season. We've seen that. And I know people are concerned about the home runs, but here's what you have to remember. Shohei Otani is a guy who often comes out in the first inning, and you see a lot of walks, you see a lot of, not wild pitches, but just things out of the zone, a lot of lack of control, and then he usually settles in by the second or third inning. And I have to say that I will take a singular mistake pitch every single time, then tons of walks in a row, tons of hits in a row. Remember, only four hits last night. Four hits. I know three of them were for home runs, but again, those home runs came on mistake pitches up in the zone. Pitchers throw mistake pitches. Now, the sweepers, yes, they were mistake pitches, but also forcing fastball, his bread and butter that he can ramp up to 101, it seems like whenever he wants to. And that one got taken for a ride too because it was Cedric Mullins. He provided all the power for Cedric Mullins to hit that one, and he hit it out. Kind of in the same place where Shohei Otani hit it as well. And so all of that to say, it's going to happen, guys. Mistakes happen. Pitches up in the zone happen. Mistake pitches happen. But I will take that every single time, considering that's one singular pitch a pitcher makes a mistake on out of, what was it, 98 pitches? So 90 (laughs) <laughs> 95 of his 98 pitches were enough to get him through seven innings. And honestly, it all goes away considering how this Angels offense all came together on Monday. 17 total hits for this team. And they did it without Anthony Rendon, who went on the IL. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But again, if you consider the fact that these guys have all come together against a very tough Orioles team who we were all very concerned about coming into this series and seeing them hit us around because their offense has been spectacular. Their pitching has not been so great, and we saw that last night against the Orioles. Now, speaking of everybody getting in on the hit parade, welcome back Chad Wallach, who came off the seven-day IL with concussion symptoms. He went three for five with a home run, going the opposite way and hitting the ball in the air. And then Jeff Fletcher from the OC register tweeted out this stat. He said, Chad Wallach in 2023 is 11 for 35 with a 314 average, three home runs and seven Ks. Chad Wallach from 2017 to 2022 was 48 for 243, which is a 198 batting average, four home runs and 93 Ks. Again, that actually that was from Sam Blum who tweeted that out. Jeff also had some great coverage of last night's game where he said that Phil Nevin said that Shohei was swinging angry after he surrendered those runs. And, and that's why he ended up getting a three run home run. So that was a great note from Jeff Fletcher. So again, great coverage from our beat writers on this one. How about Matt Thice playing at first base? He had an RBI double him and Neto combined for a fantastic play from shortstop to first base. Thice with stretch over there. Neto just smooth as ever. I feel like we're watching a veteran shortstop who's only 2020, who's only 22 and in 2022 was playing college baseball. So these guys are really putting it together. They really needed a big win against a tough team. And that's exactly what they did against the Orioles. Levon Soto is part of this team. He got called up after Rendon went on the IL. Again, we'll have a conversation about Rendon on the IL in our next segment. The good news is that Soto isn't somebody who's going to be in this starting lineup immediately because the Angels have good depth. And we saw that with the fact that like Gio Urshela was at third base in Anthony Rendon's stead because Anthony Rendon is on the IL. Gio gets the start at third. It's not Jose Rojas. It's not Jack Mayfield. It's somebody who's capable, has played tons of third base in his career, and that's exactly why Perry Manassian addressed the depth issue on this team. It needed to happen, and we are able to plug in somebody who is just as good, if not better, than league average than in Gio Urshela because of how well he plays third base over there. We can trust him 
to take over for Anthony Rendon. Hey, the Angels play the Baltimore Orioles, or the Baltimore Orioles, uh, the Baltimore Orioles, just trying to save time. They play them at 335 Pacific time. Chase Silseth is getting his first major league start this year. He said he is pumped up. He is ready to go. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. And coming up on Locked On Angels, we'll get into a conversation about Anthony Rendon being on the IL once again. And Ryan Tapera got DFA'd. Why did it take so long? We'll talk about that coming right up. But in the meantime, Locked On Angels is brought to you by the Game Time app. With the Game Time app, tickets uh, are easy to buy. You can get tickets for sports, music, comedy, and theaters. It's so fast. It's super easy. I took advantage of the Game Time app just a few weeks ago when I went to Star Wars night at Angel Stadium. Got my tickets super easy, sent right to the MLB app, and there they were. There's my three tickets that I needed to get in, and Game Time made it super easy. They offer great deals on last-minute tickets. They have their best price guarantee on the Game Time app. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps, and you're all set. You can see images of your seats before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Discover the lowest price guarantee and even get event cancellation protection. Tickets are sent directly to your phone, so you don't have to dig through your email. Grab tickets without the stress on the GameTime app. So all you have to do is download the GameTime app, create an account, and take advantage of this. Use the code LOCKEDONMLB in all caps for $20 off your very first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I want to thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen today. Again, you've got John Frisch. I'm one half of the Super Halo Bros and Locked On Angels. Mike's laptop is probably currently sitting in a big bag of rice in hopes of that drying up. (laughs) So hopefully he'll be back with us soon. I know he's working on getting a new laptop, but hey, we appreciate you being here with us, Locked On Everydayers. Join us every single day this week as we break down each game of the series against the Orioles. They play the O's again at 3.35 Pacific time. I like these early games. Catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. We got the news on Monday that Anthony Rendon was going to the IL for groin strain. We did hear over the weekend on Sunday that he had some groin strain. He actually got pulled early on Saturday night's game and came out of the game with that groin strain, sat out of the lineup on Sunday, and then we got the news that Levon Soto was being called up. So it was kind of inevitable that Rendon was going to go on the 10-day IL. He said he's been feeling this discomfort uh, since the Milwaukee series, since they played the Brewers. Here's a quote from Rendon. He said, It's definitely frustrating. I'm angry. I've been getting punched a lot lately. It sucks. He said he's not sure he'll be out very long, but he doesn't think that it's too bad, which is great news. Here's the thing about Anthony Rendon. This guy was coming off an incredible run with the Nationals. 2019, he's part of that World Series team, and he's... 29, 28, 29 years old at the time. Billy Epler, uh, I know Artie Marino and Billy Epler really wanted to go after Garrett Cole that offseason. He signed with the Yankees. Artie, in his Artie way, said, well, get me the next best big name. And that's where Anthony Rendon came in. Anthony Rendon fills a role at third base that was sorely needed because we had been rolling with uh, Yunel Escobar, who was not terrible, Um, Pretty good hitter, um, pretty okay defender over there. We had Luis Valbuena, uh, may he uh, rest in peace, a a fun part of this team. Luis Valbuena was over there at third base, not a great hitter, a better defender, but David Fries was kind of the last good third baseman we've had, and that was part of that 2014 Angels playoff team, and then he was also around for 2015 as well. So, Third base was a much-needed position for the Halos. And so it made sense to get somebody like Anthony Rendon. But the problem is is that the playing time has not been there. Now, 
He had a great 2020. Unfortunately, it was 60 games. He was top 10 in MVP voting that season. 2021, he goes down with the hip issue. Plays 35% of the games that season. 2022, he goes down with the wrist issue and has to have surgery. Is able to come back uh, toward the end of the season for just a few games and serve out the suspension for the uh, the brawl, the base brawl with the Mariners that happened that June. He got suspended. As soon as he's activated, he comes back, serves that time, and gets into a few games at the end of last season. 29% games played last year. So far, he's played 73% of the season. And of course, he's been dealing with injuries. He's been dealing with the suspension where he grabbed that A's fan by the jersey and also just needing time off to try to keep him healthy and on the field. Now, the big question I think Halo fans like to discuss, is Anthony Rendon a disappointment? And I have to say that the fact that we are not getting the Anthony Rendon of Nationals fame so far is a disappointment. And it all has to do with injuries. I think signing a guy like him was necessary for third base, but if you're signing a guy to a seven-year deal at age 28, 29, you know this is going to happen. You know that post-30, the body doesn't hold up as well as it used to. You know that injuries are going to happen, and they happen to varying degrees. Unfortunately, Anthony's have kept him out for long periods of time, and that is difficult on Halo fans. I've seen a lot of comparisons to, is this the worst contract since Albert Pujols. And I think there's some give and take there because Albert Pujols did have his injured seasons, but you could count on Albert Pujols to play almost every single game and give you at least 30 home runs a season. And while he wasn't St. Louis Pujols in the same way that Anthony Rendon is not Washington Nationals Rendon, Pujols was out there a lot and he played. And yes, He's leading the Angels. He leads the Angels in all-time grounding into double plays, things like that. Uh, Trust me, I remember how frustrating it was to watch Albert Pujols. But there were certain things that he did well. He was a big part of that 2014 team, getting them to the postseason. Had a great year that year. 2013, he was hurt, and he dealt with plantar fasciitis for most of his Angels tenure. The feet went, and then Albert's power and all of that stuff went. Again, 30 home runs you can count on from Albert Pujols at least. He averaged that about each season. But I think my concern here between Rendon and Albert Pujols is this. We saw guys like Kendrys Morales walk. We saw, well, we traded him actually. We saw guys like CJ Krohn uh, get traded as well. We know Morales went on to do great things. He helped the Royals get to the World Series and win that one in 2015. We've seen C.J. Crone crush it. Uh, We've seen um, other first basemen who really stepped up for other teams, go to other teams, and and could have been good for the Angels. G-Man Choi comes to mind. But it was because we had Albert Pujols playing first base. Yeah, I know he DH sometimes too, but he really blocked a lot of potential future stars for us because of his role at first base. And I think the big key here is this. Anthony Rendon has not been Anthony Rendon of the Nationals. That much is true. However, in the time that he's played, he's been a valuable part of this team. You might question why he's hitting cleanup when the power's not there right now. Now, I will say he's had some good uh, hits lately. He's (laughs) maxing out that exit velocity lately. Unfortunately, he's on the IL again. But I don't see him blocking anybody's path to the majors in terms of third baseman. There's not anybody we're clamoring for in terms of somebody coming up from the minors. We're saying, oh man, that guy should be playing third base, not Anthony Rendon. There's nobody like that in the minors. So Anthony Rendon is fulfilling a role that is sorely needed right now. And fortunately, Perry Manassian anticipating needing somebody to replace him if Rendon goes down in Gio Urshela, that was a great move in the offseason, very necessary. I'm really glad that Perry emphasized depth this season, good old GMPM, uh, getting all the depth that we needed 
this season. Again, I think the big difference here is that Albert Pujols played a lot. You could count on him for you know about 30 home runs, a decent average. You're not going to get St. Louis Pujols, but he was blocking a lot of future stars at first base. With Anthony Rendon, he fulfills the role that the Angels need right now in third base because who else are you going to get? Who else are you going to bring up right now? Uh, a lot of the guys that we're excited about are going to play shortstop, second base, not third base. So the Angels have to really emphasize the third base position for the future if Anthony Rendon is not able to be on the field. And Gio Urshela, he's done at the end of this season. Yeah, maybe they'll sign him and bring him back. But at the same time, you got to think about your future if you're Perry Manassian and Artie Marino, who you have in that system and who's going to play third base there. You know, Anthony Rendon may be on the I.L., but Ryan Tapera, who was on the I.L., has been DFA'd. And <laughs> Angel fans, you got your wish because they've been calling for the head of Ryan Tapera since last year. And, and now we're asking the question, why did the Halos wait so long to DFA Ryan Tapera? Now, he was not always fantastic last year, but he was serviceable. He was not certainly, certainly not the guy that we signed at the end of 2021 to come and pitch for us, but he was serviceable. I think him and Loop unfairly get grouped together because they were signed around the same time. They were both meant to help fix this bullpen, but I think Tapera had stood out a bit better than Aaron Loop. However, that's all changed this season. Here is some information from Sam Blum of The Athletic who had a great article on what happened with Ryan Tapera. Just to break it down for you, Tapera had a 727 ERA and a 2.08 whip in only eight and two thirds innings this season. So an above seven ERA, he's letting two guys per inning get on base, whether that's by a hit or a walk. And that all happened in less than 10 innings. His uh, percentage of throwing strikes was just 58% of the time. The underlying metrics, you guys know I'm a big stat nerd. They had regressed. His expected batting average, which is essentially how good is his pitch, how good is his throw, and what kind of result would that pitch yield? Well, that expected batting average on his pitching, that went up, the slugging went up, and the weighted on base average were all worse in 2023. He wasn't getting hitters to chase. He wasn't generating any swings and misses. We know that the Angels have been emphasizing that out of their pitchers. And quite possibly the biggest, uh, uh, you know, problem for, for, Ren, uh, for Tapera, the fastball velocity went down. In his final outing, he averaged just 90.6 miles per hour on eight fastballs. So with all of this, why did the Halos wait so long? Why did they give him the chance to go on the IL, get better, and come back? Here's a few reasons. In his first three outings this year, he actually had four scoreless innings, seven strikeouts, zero walks, and just three hits. So he started the season well. You were kind of hopeful that things could change for him, considering how well those first three outings went. In fact, uh, he pitched in 10 games this season, but all of his runs came in only three of those games. So while the ERA was inflated above seven, he actually gave up all of his runs in three of the of the ten games. In the seven games, he pitched seven and two-thirds innings pitch without giving up any runs. Now, here's another thing. His expected ERA was 2.87, according to Fangraphs, which is four and a half less than what his actual ERA was. Again, expected ERA examines how well the pitcher is throwing the baseball, how well they're pitch is spinning and moving and all of that stuff and says, yeah, that will probably yield a result of 2.87. It's all metrics. It's all data. That could indicate some bad luck or maybe even some bad defense behind him. And finally, the team, they lost Jose Quijada and they lost Austin Warren to Tommy John surgery. And the Angels had emphasized depth over the offseason and and part of that is not getting rid of guys if you don't have to. And so it's surprising to see the fact that they gave up Jose Quijada 
and Austin Warren to Tommy John surgery. They gave up Ryan Tapera uh, in this moment, but he just wasn't getting the job done. The Angels' bullpen flexibility has a lack of optionable relievers, so guys can't be sent down or sent up. It makes it really difficult to get better without hurting your depth. You're going to have to cut guys if you want to bring somebody up. He's making $7 million. The Angels are going to have to pay for that. Um, but they have shown that they're not going to wait around on guys to keep stinking it up, no matter how much they cost. We saw that with Upton. We saw that with Pujols. Uh, these aren't great reasons, but they are the reasons why the Halos waited on DFA Ryan Tapera. And they're all reasons why they're, they could be waiting to, you know, get rid of Aaron Loop as well, who's on the IL, who also has a seven ERA. So regarding Aaron Loop, he's on the IL. Maybe there's something there that the Angels see that they can fix. Maybe they think that he can get better. Maybe they like the underlying numbers. I'm not too sure about that. Mike and I talked about Aaron Loop a few weeks ago, and I noticed the extension he gets on his throws has shrunk over the last three years. In 2021, he was above six feet in extension. So when he throws the ball, he's reaching out about six feet worth of reach toward home plate. And the matter of inches there really matters, especially when you throw a sinker like Aaron Loop does. If that sinker is not reaching as far into the zone as it used to, and it's falling short before the the plate and the strike zone, that makes all the difference. It's not going to get guys to chase. It's not going to hit the zone for a strike. makes a huge difference. So what happens with Aaron Loop when he comes off the IL? Are we going to have him blow up a game and then get DFA'd as well? That's going to be an interesting case that we're all going to watch out for. And in the meantime... The Angels called up Zach Weiss, who I was a fan of last season. He pitched well for them. He had a 338 ERA in 13 and one-thirds innings. He has a 675 ERA in the Pacific Coast League right now, which is not hitter uh, pitcher friendly. It's it's very hitter friendly in AAA. And so you kind of have to take the ERA with a grain of salt. You really got to look at the underlying numbers. Now, the Angels have shown that they're very serious about being competitive this season. And you can see that in their decision-making. They're not going to let guys hang around who aren't going to contribute to this team. Going back to Anthony Rendon, while he has not been the same Anthony Rendon, he's still a positive addition to the lineup. He still moves Trout and Otani with runners on. He's getting base hits. He's driving in runners in scoring position when it matters. So while he has not been the same Rendon, He's still a positive contribution. And when I look at Ryan Tapera, he stopped being a co- positive contribution. When I look at Aaron Loop, him being a positive contribution to this team and helping them get to the playoffs is questionable. So we'll see what happens when Loop comes back. It doesn't mean that the Angels should just be blindly cutting players here and there and everywhere. I know that a lot of people have been upset with Jose Suarez and saying DFA Suarez. There are so many more options before you have to get to the point where you cut players. But if they're not contributing, if they're not keeping the Angels competitive, then it's time to go. And in the ho- in the case of Jose Suarez, there's some moves you can make in terms of maybe he's a better bullpen fit, maybe he's a better pitcher if he has an opener. There's some still there's still some options there. He is also on the IL, so we'll see what happens when he comes back. Again, I'm happy to see the Angels not holding on to guys for the sake of just holding on to them because they're paying them a lot or they're desperate for their spot in the bullpen. There are so many young guys who can come up and take the place of Ryan Tapera. Right now they got Zach Weiss. If somebody happens to go down in the bullpen, we might see Sam Bachman come up. We could see Ben Joyce. That would be really interesting. And so, again, the Angels have to remain competitive. They got to make quick decisions if they want to stay on pace with the likes of the Rangers and the Mariners and the Astros. They got to stay competitive. They got to make quick decisions on these guys. I want to thank you for making Locked on Angels your first listen today. The Angels play the O's again at 3.35 Pacific time today. Catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast with the SiriusXM app. Just search Angels. Hey, friends, we really appreciate you joining us today. Again, I'm John Frisch, one half of Locked On Angels. You can get at us at Locked On Angels on Twitter and also at Super Halo Bros on Twitter 
and Instagram. Now, coming up on tomorrow's show with Rendon's injury, we got to thinking about Mike Trout. How many games is Mike Trout on pace to play this year? We're going to talk about that and how Phil Nevin has a strategy to keep him healthy. Until then, my name is John. My brother Mike hopefully will be back soon with a new computer and uh, (laughs) then we can be back together again. But I appreciate you being here with me and I uh, really hope that you'll comment below if you're watching on YouTube. Get Again, get at us on social media. We'll see you back here for more Locked on Angels tomorrow.